Welcome back to the early line. This is hour number two here on a Friday. Kevin Walsh and Donnie Wrightside live on Sports Grid, and it is time for game of the week. Not always the Sunday night football provide us the best game of the week, but in this spot, I think it definitely does. When you factor in the two teams and the storylines surrounding both, it is the Dallas Cowboys hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a slight dog, two and a half points here. Total is 50 and a half. There is only one place I think we can start, DRS, and that is Tom Brady and what the expectations are for the GOAT. 274 and a half is his passing yardage prop. I would anticipate the passing touchdown number to be at two and a half, even if it is plus money towards the over. What do you think here? Game number one for the Bucs and Tom Brady. Now, I like to preface this by saying, Kevin, like over the last three weeks, like me and I include you into this, like we're really worried about the Buccaneers. No, and just do your own thing. Game. Just I your own that's thing. What it was. Just your own I, thing. I'm trying to include just you. you in this. No, I don't want to be included. Just do your own Did thing. Did I hear this wrong? You got this. I heard it wrong? Cause you, probably because you don't listen. Just do your own thing. Uh, now, go ahead. Now, go ahead. All right, so yeah. Try to be nice and be you know, a co-host to try to include you in some of my thoughts, which are pretty salient here. But let's take a look at this game overall, Kevin. I'm worried about Tom Brady. I am. I want to see where he goes through. There's way too many tabloid stuff out here. You know, Giselle hasn't moved back home, and that has to weigh on your mind. But having said that, are we just going to let something slip through the cracks here? Like, I just saw a report yesterday that Dak Prescott's ankle is now injured. Like, what is going on with the Dallas Cowboys? What is in the drinking (laughs) water down there in Texas? Is everybody just getting hurt here? Because when I look at the lineups, I love to look at depth charts, and immediately I see Jason Peters as your starting left tackle, and my quarterback has an ankle problem. Gallup, who I don't think he's going to be in there, obviously, on Sunday coming off that knee injury. So what are we as an offense with the Dallas Cowboys? The one thing that we do know, the Bucs are going to bring it pretty well on defense, which means that front seven is going to get pressure. And here's one topic, which I know we can agree upon here, is when you take Dak Prescott without all his toys and weapons and his line, they tend to struggle more than not when they have all of those weapons at their disposal. So if I'm looking at C.D. Lamb, who now you can focus on, that's a very talented secondary year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Where are we going with the football? And I don't care that Dak Prescott was laughing and smiling for, hey, you know what? You're going to see some things on the report that my ankle, no, your ankle was on that report because it's injured now. So what am I getting out of the Dallas Cowboys, which the reason behind it is if you take a look like upset alert, right? It's a short dog here price plus two and a half here for the Dallas Cowboys. They're giving mm-hmm. me nothing outside of me saying, Kevin, oh, I don't think Tom Brady is going to be focused. Well, if Tom Brady is focused for this football game, what am I getting mm-hmm. out of the Dallas Cowboys? There's no way, shape, or form. I want to take the Dallas Cowboys. I really do. As that contrarian mm-hmm. look on, oh, I do think something might be wrong with the Bucs. I can't do it, Kevin. I can't with what I'm hearing out of the Dallas Cowboys camp. Yeah, the, the reality on Dak and the Cowboys is when everything isn't perfect, things are usually pretty bad. And things are far from perfect there. As much as I can't, pre- I don't want to see Jason Peters still be awesome now that he's a Cowboy. Uh, if he would have gone maybe literally anywhere else, we could have tried to drum up some good vibes for the old man. But no, 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 no. And by the way, if Jason Peters finishes this football game, it would probably uh, be a positive sign for the Dallas Cowboys because the injuries have just at this point in his career continued to pile up. The wide receiver core is going to be tested a lot in this football game. Michael Gallup, I I wouldn't anticipate plays. It's going to be CeeDee Lamb and a lot of rookies for Dak Prescott there. The radio audience is here on a Friday morning. Kevin Walsh, Donnie right side of the early line on Sirius XM Channel 159. It is a banged-up Dallas team. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what about the banged-up nature of Tampa Bay? For, For some reason, people have decided to act as if the entire offensive line is injured. Still tremendous bookend tackles and Tristan Wirfs and Donovan Smith. And by the way, they brought Shaq Mason over from New England in the trade this offseason. They're still starting Pro Bowl caliber offensive linemen at three of the five spots. And we know Brady's going to get rid of the ball quickly here in this game. I've often been tempted by the total at 50 and a half, thinking that Tampa Bay can carry a lot of this load. But we... I cannot do this and then get left with 14 Cowboy points and lose Uh. my mind where this team doesn't bring anything to the table. But I think Dak should have enough juice because the one thing he's very good at is when they're getting blown out, 
throwing multiple touchdowns in the fourth quarter to make his final stat line look good, even though he's been trash for the first three quarters of the game. I, I think this is going to be an over. I expect Tampa Bay to handle business, and I expect Tom Brady to come out firing early here, Donnie. Yeah, I think you're on point there because I can't take the Dallas Cowboys here. As much as that home dog on opening day, and you know we saw it last year, Dallas Cowboys were a surprise opening night on the road against the world champion Buccaneers and should have won that football game. But these two teams going in a little bit different directions at this point, unexpiring off or uninspiring off season, as I should say for the Cowboys. But I think you're right on that. The 50 and a half. I, you got to take this game over. This doesn't feel to me like Tom Brady's going to walk the football up and down the field against this Dallas secondary. I think they're going to be able to put pressure on Dallas. And also, maybe we get 40 passes out of Dak Prescott, which should help mm. us with the over. But come on now. He, he, Dak Prescott's already injured. I thought this was the training camp where he went through where he wasn't injured and he finally gets a clean season. Apparently not, Kevin. Apparently not. Zeke mm. minus 125 to score a touchdown in this game. Oh. Uh, one of yeah. a few guys that's a minus price there. Leonard Fournette, yeah. CeeDee Lamb, one of your favorites, Mike Evans, minus mm. 105. And then the big numbers start to open up. Will Chris Godwin play? A lot of big storylines around that. How about we pause the NFL? College football is up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge only on Sports Grid. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets, Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons and sign up today. A-Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, let's uh, take a look at the number one wide receiver overall. Who will it be at the end of the season? Will it be Justin Jefferson? Will it be Jamar Chase? Will it be Cooper Cup? Will it be Devontae Adams? I don't think that there is as clear of an answer here. It's like Cooper Cup, amazing season. But, you know, I mean, I, you would think Allen Robinson will probably be a little bit better than Robert Woods, you know. And, and this Stafford shoulder injury, right? It's like, what do we do? The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Nugs, my dog, let's ride. Mm. I got the Denver Broncos oh. winning the Super Bowl this year. There's nothing to be said about, oh, a guy can't come over first time, too much change, and ultimately figure it out. Yes, it's year one for Russell Wilson in Denver. It was year one for Matthew Stafford in L.A. And I know you're going to tell me, well, that was with Sean McVay. Luckily for Nathaniel Hackett, I don't think this is all that difficult. Only on Sports Grid.
Back right here on the early line. It is a packed college football slate. There's Friday games as well, mm. DRS. But, I mean, truthfully, does time really allow? As much as I know you're chomping at the bit to give mm-hmm. people your you know, UCF Louisville breakdowns, we want to get yeah. to the main games on this slate. And it starts with Texas. Al- Again, this. let me just pause here for a quick second to yeah. appreciate this. This is college football to a T. Unquestionably, the biggest game on this board is a three-touchdown spread, Donnie. You know what's also interesting about that, too, Kevin? It's a 12 o'clock noon start here for Alabama, Texas. You figured this would be mm-hmm. the night game. Now, we assume, is this going to be on, is this like Fox's big game where they wanted to make sure they have it at 12 for that big noon splash? I understand it, but you're right about that. The excitement coming into this, oh, let me sit down on my couch, and if somebody asks you, hey, Texas, Alabama, what's the line here? Seven, eight, nine, under 10, right? No. Close to three touchdowns. Yeah. That is eye-opening. It really, really is. It's a tough spot to figure out because Alabama's first game up against Utah State, they win 55 nothing as a 42-and-a-half-point mm-hmm. favorite. Utah State is a reigning conference champion, but you take their first two games, and it looks like it's going to be a real step back for Utah State. Close game with UConn. And then Alabama, by the way, not only won 55 nothing. That was the score after three quarters. Alabama just went, stopped, and shut everything down. Texas in their first game was able to win and cover as with a 52 to 10 final over UL Monroe. They weren't really pushed, unsurprisingly, by UL Monroe. So it's we have we learned enough about these teams through one game? Probably not. But the other again, odd spot at times when you're betting in college football is Alabama does not need to win this game by 35, by 42. But we kind of all seem to have a belief that they're capable of winning this game by legitimately five touchdowns here. It what It's what makes things difficult. The one anecdote is trying to maybe figure out at times when Nick Saban might want to run it up and when he might want to keep things close to the vest. Sark, a former coordinator of his, Saban very fond of, perhaps DRS, he doesn't try and pile it on, but that's still going to require Texas's offense to do their part to avoid a blowout here. No, it really is, and that's the ultimate question. Now, the one thing that we've seen in the past, like some of these games that we talk about with Nick Saban in the blowout category, when he's playing one of those MAC teams here, really shuts it down, and what was it, the Citadel giving him a game just a few years ago? Maybe it was even last year at that point. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Sark, do you want to embarrass him? But also, those out-of-conference games that he does play on the big stage, he has really throttled teams in the past. And there's no bigger recruiting tool in the state of Texas, which is one of those fertile grounds for recruiting, to say, you really want to go to Texas? You see us go down there last year and win by 35 points. This is the place you'd be. You want to win a national championship? You want to go pro? These are the games that these recruits are watching. Because correct me if I'm wrong, even if we're not taking an angle of X and O's, do you know what Texas is doing right now with Sarkeesian? What's probably their biggest recruiting weekend here? Come on down. Watch 85, mm. 95,000 fans in the stands. Look at this crazy atmosphere. This is what you mm-hmm. want to be a part of. Only for those recruits probably getting recruited by Alabama. Go, whoops. Hey, man, Alabama just walked up. It's a great <laughs> atmosphere and all, Coach. But I'm going to Alabama at this point. Now, my question to you would be on this. We see the 21. You're going to win by 21 points to cover this. Can Alabama do that? Absolutely. But if Texas hangs around in this game, Kevin, it's not because it's going to be like 10 to 7 at the half, right? So I look at that 65 and a half number. You can figure you penciling in Alabama for high 30s regardless of who they're playing here. But I got an idea Mm. that Texas does have some firepower that can certainly score some points. Now, last year, last week doesn't give you any pause because they threw a shutout and basically used their entire team, including backups, to get that shutout. Does that have any worries to you when looking at that total? Yeah, no, it does. So I'm leaning towards actually under in the game. Bryce Young is the star of the show for Alabama. Jameer Gibbs, by the way, he's minus 650 anytime touchdown. Minus 650. Jameer Gibbs, the starting (laughs) Alabama running back, who, by the way, didn't score last week, but just, just, just for reference, didn't score last week, minus 650. But the problem is Alabama's defense might actually end up underrated. The secondary is loaded. Will Anderson is maybe pound for pound the best player in college football, I worry about what Texas can bring to the table, and therefore Alabama does not need 
40, 50 points. To put it, let's put it like this. If Alabama's under 40, right, call it 38 points, you're going to need a huge day from the Texas offense relative to the competition. So I think an under could make sense here actually in this game, despite the fact that there is so much talent on the field offensively. I think Bama's game script could be a little bit lower paced, and therefore if Texas's offense struggles, it really starts to slow down. There's a couple of other ranked-ranked matchups on this board. The late one involves Baylor and BYU. Fascinating game. BYU hosting in Provo as a field goal favorite here, rotating between three and a half and three. Total catches the eye at 53 and a half. Last week, BYU plays USF 50-21, your final score. Baylor, while playing Albany, I know, 69 to 10. Both of these teams participating in games that were into the 70s but that, to me, is kind of a, a worry spot, if anything, on a 53-and-a-half year as BYU hosts a top-10 team in the country. Yeah, monster game. And also, take a look at this, too, for some future implications here. You know who's headed to the Big 12? That's BYU. So you figure mm -hmm. Baylor and BYU might be a nice little rivalry moving forward. But I think you have to nail that. This is going to be a great atmosphere in Pro Bowl. Sold-out crowd. They'll be excited for this one. I'm not surprised that this line opened up at 3.5 and, and now sits at 3, almost that coin flip. But I'm in agreements with you. If we're looking at both the teams, the way they play here, can they get both get into the 20s? Absolutely here. So the 52-and-a-half for me would be a play towards the over. For Looking for a coin flip, I would always lean to the home team. I think BYU can play very well at home, having that home crowd advantage. But I'm more confident that both of these teams move the football and we get some points here. Shapin's a pretty good young quarterback, had a decent week last week. Didn't have to do all that much. But BYU, certainly, they've been known for offense for years. And I think they could certainly put up some points again on Aranda's defense here for Baylor. And I may try and, because again, that 53 is giving me some hesitation. We'll see where we land tomorrow. Make sure you're watching college football today, 9 a.m. start time there, all the way up until noon kickoff. Me, Ben Stevens, and Joe Lisi. Maybe I'll come around completely on the over, but I might hone in on Jaron Hall, BYU's quarterback, uh, because if Baylor's strength right now really is in the front of their defense there, if it forces Jaron Hall to go through the air, then perhaps uh, on a lower passing total. It's not listed right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Could provide some juice. There's a ranked-ranked SEC matchup here with Florida and Kentucky. Florida, the biggest gainer in week number one. Go from unranked to 12th in the country. Anthony Richardson all of a sudden feels like a viable Heisman candidate. But they're going to need to put another result up on the board here at home. They're a five-and-a-half-point favorite against the Kentucky Wildcats. Total is 52-and-a-half. It's one of those games. It's a rare spot. I think it's going to become a really interesting thing. People will be interested in side total, Donnie. But I think people will be just as fascinated on a week-to-week -week basis betting Anthony Richardson props. Right now, minus 155 to score a touchdown. Rushing total, 62.5. The kid's an absolute superstar. Yes, and also looking at this game, Kevin, from a handicapping perspective, do we overvalue Florida? Hey, nice win against a top-10 program. I Fair. think they can do it again, which now they're favored by six points in this game when they were a dog last week to Utah. And also one of those betting angles that I was using, having so much fun with saying, hey, can a quarterback score here? Because one of those will be 7-1, to 8-1, to or 9-1. to one. Look mm -hmm. at the two quarterbacks in this game, Kevin, as you pointed out. Anthony Richardson, a minus 155 for an anytime touchdown. And how about this? Will Levis, a plus 120. So both of these quarterbacks, athletic and expected to score touchdowns here we'll see if that happens but it's interesting to me to see Florida now playing that minus six expected to win favorite we'll see if Napier and the boys can get it done it's a big adjustment from because of that Utah win it's a really good point by you two potential first round quarterbacks massive massive game on this slate we'll see if Will Levis can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Anthony Richardson we're back to the NFL the birds are in action fly Eagles fly we'll be right back Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College football today. Alabama in winning SEC 
champion. It's the island of misfit tours. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. Four dollar gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In injuries. Game, line, but you can take the access. point. You can take the money line. And a sports book if you shop around you can get it at 133 but um that's my best bet on the night joe so that's the one i'm going big in I'm game go. live prime time i'm a bit nostalgic i'm going with an international jason day and sergio garcia but boy you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination get the winning edge only on sports grid your 24 7 sports wagering network if you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten that. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Dolphins now a three and a half point favorite against New England. It's just so much mystery between both teams. You know, we talked about the Patriots and losing McDaniels. You know, they they get rid of the fullback in the offseason. They're going to look to be more vertical down the field. And then they lose Thornton, the rookie wide receiver, who was one of their best playmakers in training camp, right? So, and then they have, you know, who's calling the plays, Joe Judge, Matt Patricia. Just so much unknown with the Patriots. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The sky is the limit for Micah Parsons. So if we're looking overall, this is an award, Kevin, the Defensive Player of the Year. It doesn't go to a middle linebacker who makes a lot of tackles. And quite frankly, it rarely goes to a DB because what do you have to have? 15 interceptions in 17 games to even get a look at this point. And the better of the cornerback you are, the less statistics that you have. And if you don't have statistics, some voters, Kevin, are going to tell you, I can't vote for you. You only had one interception. Yeah, but I'm the best cornerback in football. Nobody throws only my way. Only on Sports Grid. Eagles Lions, what a game this should be. Two teams that are really interesting is the Eagles at this point. Have they moved officially to division favorites yet? I mean, they should yes. be at this rate here. Yeah, they are. How about that? Plus 130, the Cowboys are plus 155, so some legitimate distance. Mm -mm -mm. So the Eagles have made their climb up to division favorites. And the Detroit Lions, I'm telling you, you will see more people pick that team to make the playoffs than finish last in their division. People love the Detroit Lions this year. And that was, I think, before Hard Knocks even factored in. It is a three-and-a-half-point line for Detroit at home catching those points. 48-and-a-half is the total, and it's continuing to move upwards. Lions, Eagles, week one action. Other than Kevin by saying, any given Sunday, it's week one. We really don't know what we're going to get out of these football teams. That's the shot I give for the Detroit Lions. And I'm not being a homer here on the Philadelphia Eagles. I just look at this honestly to myself and say, what's more likely to happen? The Detroit Lions come out and go on fire, score over 30 points and hold the Eagles offense down. And, oh, man, we were led to believe that everything is fantastic from hard knocks. And it was exactly right. Or the Philadelphia Eagles, who have no weaknesses. They don't have a weakness. And you could say, you know, I play it up all the time, Jalen Hurts, which we'll see what we get out of him. Is the, you know, adrenaline high for me to him have a Pro Bowl season? Not necessarily, Kevin. He doesn't even need to. Their offensive line is elite. Their wide receivers slash tight ends are elite. Mix in a couple talented running backs. Take a look at their defense. Their defensive line is elite. Their linebackers are fine. Their secondary is just talking about the cornerback position. The best in football. 
what am I missing with this line at three and a half? I don't understand it. And again, this is coming from me that says, look, I really don't get started in the NFL till week three. But the convictions here are not from a fanboy perspective. It's from, I don't understand the hype that would be for the Detroit Lions and why you would bet them, Kevin. We just talked about a college football game. Hey, Texas, can you hang around? Uh, yeah, they can hang around within 21 points. This spread isn't 20 and a half. And again, I'm not saying it's supposed to be. But three and a half just means you basically pick in the Detroit Lions because you think you're comfortable with them winning this game outright. And I don't see it happening. Maybe Jared Goff has a decent football game. Maybe those wide receivers step up and DeAndre Swift is amazing at running back. See what I'm saying though, Kevin? Maybe, maybe, mm. maybe. Unless Jalen Hurts implodes in Detroit on Sunday, the Eagles win this going away. They win by seven plus points. That's the way I feel. I've come around a lot from the offseason up till now on the Eagles, where I'm basically mm -hmm. saying, unless the quarterback is a disaster, they're going to win a lot of football games this year. And game one, I expect the Eagles to be on point. They win this game and they cover. Here's the thing with the Detroit Lions from last season. The most beloved three-win football team in the history of the NFL is that every other week, they treated the game like it was a Super Bowl. And that sure. is usually why they were absolutely smashed the following week. Because you could only... Remember when they went to the Rams against Matthew Stafford and they were doing onside kicks On to open everything. up the football yes. game? I mean, they were just going... Yeah. And they had like a 10 nothing. Again, it was their Super Bowl that game. They had smashed the next week, right? That is why I hesitate here. Because it's not, it's not that it's just week one. But Dan Campbell can get his guys motivated. There will be trick plays. It will not surprise me if Amron St. Brown is throwing the football down the field at some point to TJ Hawkinson. They are going to go for the gusto because they are trying to set themselves up here for a big season. The total's tough at 48 and a half, though, because if the Eagles gain Fine. control, we know they have an ability to slow this down. But I'm very interested in Jalen Hurts' passing prop at 225 and a half. If you look through the final eight or so games of Jalen Hurts' season, we were routinely under this number. That is because Nick Sirianni adjusted. All right, we need to be run first, run first, run first. And I'm not going to allow Jalen to drop back 35 plus times. But at the start of last season, Jalen Hurts threw the ball 35 plus times in three, or rather in four of his first five games. That's because Sirianni wants to throw the football. Another year for Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown in the mix, Devonta Smith, sophomore season, obviously Dallas Goddard there. Donnie, I think the Eagles are going to want to throw the football. I think it gives Hurts a good chance to throw over 225 and a half passing. Yes, and also, let's remember from last year, Kevin, when you look at the Eagles, and sometimes it's hard to correlate last year into this year, I understand that, but the one thing we did know, when the Eagles were more talented and favored, they handled their business. They're going to have mm -hmm. the same exact scenario opening day. Do you remember last year, hey, what are we going to get out of Nick Sirianni in this offense and see what happens? They blew Atlanta right off the football field on the road. It feels like a similar type of team now. Again, I do think you're right. Dan Campbell's going to have these guys ready to go because I think he's calling basically game one is their Super Bowl as how it's going to set the tone for the season. You'll get their best punch, but talent wins out. If anybody's ever played a sport, you're like, hey, we're real fired up for the football game. And right after kickoff, it's like, oh, wow, this team's actually better than us. So that hype rally that you had in the locker room, oh, we're chomping at that bit to get out here. That ends after one kick. We'll see if the Philadelphia Eagles can hold serve in this game, and I think they will. Keep it locked on an NFC East team. The Commanders host the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot of people interested in Jacksonville this week. This number working its way down now to just two and a half points as we begin the sophomore season for Trevor Lawrence. Carson Wentz's first game as a commander. You look at the numbers on both of these quarterbacks, the expectations are not super lofty from a props perspective, which I think has a lot to do with uh, last season all in all. But it's a fascinating, fascinating game here. Doug Peterson back under the helm now with the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. Totals 43 and a half. Commanders, Jags. Do you see value in this game? 
I, I, do, I actually do. I think the Commanders are the better football team overall, talent for talent. Now, will there be a come a time where the Jacksonville Jaguars finally get it together? They're still learning at this point. Last year was a wasted season. What did you want to see out of Trevor Lawrence? Well, play 17 games, mm -hmm. maturation process. By the end of the year, it looks like he could take that leap in year number two. Well, the coaching staff was a disaster, and they never got off the ground. So now we yeah. try to flip it forward. If this game was at home, Kevin, in Jacksonville, I have a little bit different vibe. But if I'm just looking at one side of the football, the commander's offense versus the Jacksonville defense, the commander should score. McLaurin, Samuel, and Dotson at wide receiver. Logan Thomas at tight end. A decent offensive line with a good ground game. If Carson Wentz just brings his game that he had last year with the Colts, they'll handle their business in this game. I don't understand the line move from, let's just say, about four down to two and a half. But if it's going to stay below three, I'm taking the commanders on Sunday here. I think that's understandable. Backing a team at home. I'm interested in this total. Now, and this could be a, a personal thing, right? But I am probably higher than the consensus on both of these quarterbacks. So we check in at 43 and a half. Basically, if both you know offenses get you to 21-21, you should then be able to find your way over this number. You basically hey, we have to find your way over the number then at that point in time. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to have a phenomenal season. I really do. And I think people are far too hard on what Carson Wentz brought to the table last year, 27 touchdowns to seven interceptions. Most teams would kill for that touchdown to interception ratio ultimately from their quarterback here. Do you think this can be a higher scoring game than the 43 and a half suggests? I still know Chase Young, by the way, early season for the Commanders. Yeah, it's really low. Now, there is some light rain in the forecast here. Not going to be an overly hot day, which is actually kind of good here for opening day. You never want to see those 90-degree temperatures where these guys didn't mm -hmm. get you know 80 game reps in the preseason. Yeah. But I do think Trevor Lawrence is – Doug Peterson is a perfect concept coach here for Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. What you have is an athletic guy. Carson Wentz, back when Doug Peterson took over for the Philadelphia Eagles and they won the Super Bowl, they're going to use a lot of those comps. It's read option, give them short passing raids to look at, and they have some pretty good wide receivers to deal with. But if we're looking from a 42 and a half. 43 perspective, Kevin, it's very hard to take the under. Like you say, like, wait, the Bears, you know, they're certainly an under team because their offense doesn't look as explosive. I do think the Jacksonville Jaguars have a chance to open it up and let it rip in this game. I'm not taking the under this one, that's for sure. Fair enough. How about the Giants making a trip to Tennessee? They do so as a five and a half point underdog. Total is 43 and a half. Some rain expected here as well between the Titans and the Giants. Brought. Let me ask you this. Brian Dable, a little uh, of the shine taken off of him with Buffalo's performance last night? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I didn't miss the beat at all. Maybe it was just Josh Allen here. Maybe it was Kenny Dorsey here whipping, uh, you know, Josh Allen into shape. No, I, I really like Brian Dable, but he's got a different deck of cards to deal with this year, Kevin, than he did last year. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. A, a different, uh, <laughs> a different looking offense, but there's still talent on the Giants side of the football. I have to tell you. I'm interested, again, by a lower total. Sometimes week one, these, are, these low totals jump off of the page to me. But I don't know how the weather's going to impact things. That's where some of the hesitation checks in. I'll say this. Derrick Henry is minus 170 for a touchdown. He's plus 350 for two. His rushing total's 98 and a half. Are you looking to back King Henry? Where are you looking to go in Titans-Giants? It's probably King Henry, right? Because if you're getting back to Titans football, it's running the ball. Like, A.J. Brown's no longer at wide receiver, and Burke certainly is not going to be a replacement for him, apparently right off the stretch here in year number one for him. But it's just so simple to me, Kevin. I look at the Giants, and I say to myself, it's really a learning curve here for Brian Dable. Not being a head coach, but just finding out what type of roster he has. I'm not high on Daniel Jones. And Saquon Barkley, that's great. Hey, he's going to have a bounce-back season. With what? That offensive line? And also the wide receivers. Kenny Galladay was basically almost cut at the end of camp being a high-priced free agent from the year before. <laughs> so, one Dale Robinson and, you know, Kadarius Tony are going to come to save the day. Do these guys even know the playbook at this point? I can't take the Giants on the road in this one. The only way I'm looking is for the Titans. And, yes, King Henry's going to get in the end zone one, two, maybe three times Sunday. <laughs> Don't say it can't happen. I think he's the second uh, strongest odds to score a touchdown on the board this week. Jonathan Taylor, we'll get to that in game in a minute. 
minus 250. I'm interested in Daniel Jones rushing prop at 19 and a half. If there's one thing Dable oh, can maybe bring over from Buffalo yeah. is those designed runs for Daniel Jones and let him feel comfortable. Use that athleticism. A couple of games at a pick six all coming up. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you. There's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Football Giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout? 35 34. <laughs> raise your hands. Absolutely not. Come home, back home to the birds. But yeah. again, the thing is, I know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're Eagles fans, but you out there know how talented this football team is. It absolutely could be their season. The early line only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. It's Alvin Kamara, DeAndre Swift, De- uh, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Travis Kelsey. And the reason why I want to bring that up is because uh, in terms of Kelsey, I didn't notice this yesterday until after I got done with the Newswire show that Patrick Mahomes apologized to fantasy owners, essentially saying that this year it ain't going to be all about Hill and Kelsey. You're going to have to guess on a weekly basis. So I love to hear those sort of comments. doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, you're at the turn. Who are your two? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. If that's not the greatest stoner conversation ever, when you're on about five <laughs> rips of chronic and you start talking about your ankles and your elbows and your knees and your shoulders and, and rubbing things, I mean, you got to be paid. I don't know what was going on there, but you just got to be paid. I like Jameis. I hope he stays healthy. Uh, I do like him. He's fun. Uh, 49ers I hope he's tight end Sunday George. against the Falcons. The Sports Grid Network. Two more games to preview them to get you the first pick six of the season. Mm. Fantastic. We just talked about the Titans and the Giants. Let's talk about the favorites in the AFC South. That would be the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a division matchup here laying seven and a half points to the Houston Texans. It's a big number to be laying week one. Yeah, it is a big number to be laying week one in division, but it's also one of those games, Kevin, if we're just taking the survey of the public and they say, I got one pick I need. I don't need a spread, maybe for a suicide pool. Oh, man, look at this one. Matty Ice heads over here to Indianapolis. They're going to roll the Houston, Texas on opening day. And I say not so fast 
Not because I think that I'm going to be watching this football game in the fourth quarter, Kevin. Hey, 24-10, look at Houston, going to easily win this game. I don't think that's going to be there. But I would be very surprised if the Indianapolis Colts just run away with this game. And what I mean by that is they don't have to win by 21 points, but just be above that spread for the margin of the game. I do think you're going to get a pretty good fight here from the Texans. It'll be interesting to see how they deploy Matty Ice, a quarterback. Again, Matt Ryan coming over from the Atlanta Falcons now playing for the Colts. He is a dome quarterback. He came from a dome. His new team has a home in a dome. And where is this game going to be at here in Houston, Texas, in a dome? Now, if they were smart, they would keep that retractable roof open here, try to get some wind around there for that weak arm that Matt Ryan does have. But the pedigree of the team is so much better here on the Colts. The one thing that could get away from the Houston Texans if they don't contain the, excuse me, contain the running game here for the Indianapolis Colts. Because if that's operating early and often, there's going to be a lot of play action and not much the Texans can do. But at the same time, I do think the Texans can be sneaky here. Now, the defense is very good on the Indianapolis Colts, Kevin. Maybe a sneaky, painful team total on the Texans to go over their number in this game. The Houston Texans scored 25-plus points in three of their final four games last season. How about it? Davis Mills is going to be able to do enough in this football game to get you towards the over. We've talked about divisional dogs, home dogs. I'm not laying seven and a half with the Colts to open the season. Backdoor could be open all game long. Jonathan Taylor's minus 240 to score a touchdown. Madness. There's nothing I can do with that. Minus 240 for in the NFL. We never see numbers it's not minus like 600. that. Certainly not. No, not. Hey, listen, Jameer Gibbs looks at that and basically calls Jonathan Taylor a scrub, a bum, and a loser looking at a number like that. But ultimately, I think the Houston Texans can get me at least 21, if not more. And then you're going to be able to look at the Indianapolis Colts offense there. And I think there's going to be a point to prove on the Indy side of things. You're the ones that got rid of Carson Wentz. You brought Matt Ryan in because you think it's going to make your offense better. And also, this is why I'd be a little careful on the Jonathan Taylor numbers here, DRS. Part of, everybody seems to believe that they had to run the ball to the degree that they did last year because of Carson Wentz. Well, if Matt Ryan's here to change that, then maybe Jonathan Taylor isn't going to be able to go over a 99-and-a-half-yard prop right now on his rushing total. But I think that game has plenty of juice. The number right now is 45 and a half. Last game to get to here, it's Falcons Saints. One final home dog, divisional dog, five and a half points for the Atlanta Falcons. Low total here is 42 and a half. Jameis Winston is back. Are you back in Jameis Winston? De Dennis Allen, no Sean Payton for New Orleans. Yeah, and I do think the New Orleans Saints are the better football team and will win. But I got to tell you, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if this game just ended up last because this is one of the games that throughout the offseason probably got the least amount of chatter from our side, at least from my side in perspective, to actually break this game down. If we're getting to the starting gate healthy, and I'm talking about the New Orleans Saints right now, they should be able to blow this Atlanta team off the field. I don't want to hear like Marcus Mariota is going to have a resurgence of his career. You're already struggling to see if you're, you know, London's going to get to the starting gate here being injured. So we're going to lean on Zacchaeus and Edwards and an average running game. This is an average. That's the best thing I can use right now, right? The Atlanta Falcons are an average football team. If we think the New Orleans Saints have a chance and capable chance of winning the NFC South and, cha and challenging the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to have to win this game and give me confidence going away. If I watch this football game and Atlanta's moving the ball in this the entire way and maybe can pull off the upset, even though we don't want to have that overreaction Monday, like, man, Kevin, what happened with the Saints? This should be an easy win for the Saints. They should take care of business in this game. Unless, again, Jameis Winston isn't healthy and they just fully implode, which I don't think is going to be the case. They're better. They'll win. They'll cover. Get ready to overreact. There's a lot of reasons to believe that the Atlanta Falcons are going to have some success in this football game. First of all, we cannot overstate going from Sean Payton to Dennis Allen. Sean Payton no, won no, no matter difference. who his a, – a crazy thing to say out loud on a show that's recorded and people can play back to you at some point. A crazy thing to even suggest. Jameis Winston's a horrific favorite when we talk about yeah. ATS percentages there. A brand new wide receiver core for him. By the way, 
We don't know if Michael Thomas will play, even if it's progressing towards that nature. How effective will he be? Casey Hayward and A.J. Terrell makes up one of the best one-two punch at the cornerback position in the entire sure. league, which means Jameis Winston is dying, and I mean dying, to throw a pick six in this football game. And I think the athleticism of Marcus Mariota and just a completely new-look offense. Here's the thing. The Saints have a lot of defensive talent, Donnie. What are they? How are they preparing for this ultimately, though, here right now? Are they going back and watching old Tennessee Titans Marcus Mariota clips to feel like they're going to get ready here? I think this offense has a chance to surprise them a little bit here. Plus, Kyle Pitts is a matchup nightmare for anybody he comes up against, and it's a home divisional dog. I really do believe Atlanta will be live in this game. Yeah, it'll be one to watch. It certainly will. How about that total in the game? It is pretty low, 42 and a half. We're not yeah, worried about tough. weather conditions, obviously, with that being in a dome. You can almost see it, right, going both ways. Like, look at the end of the first quarter, 10 to 7 off to that good start. But I can also say, boy, these offenses are pretty sluggish, trying to feel themselves out in a division rivalry game, 3 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. So we'll see how those play out. The, old, the team that's more talented by far to me is the New Orleans Saints. They should be able to step up. And there is a valid point there. Sean Payton is no longer the head man, but he left it in pretty good hands here. Two coaches that have been there mm-hmm. for a long time that know exactly how Sean Payton used to play. And also Pete Carmichael was his right-hand man for so many years. I think the offense yeah. will be fine. I just don't be shocked if Atlanta rises up here, as they like to say, opening day and taking a W away from the Saints. I'm going to throw a touchdown score at you before we get to our pick six, just because I know the number is going to be. Marcus. Mar- have you seen what Marcus Mariota is for the anytime touchdown market? Mm. I was a little surprised yeah, by this number. Plus yeah. 310. I thought it would be a little bit lighter. I think Mariota is going to be live on the goal line to snag some of those runs away from a Cordero Patterson. So something to keep your eye on there is Mariota at a plus 310. That's a big, uh, legit number here. Though, again, it's a talented Saints defense, no doubt about it. Let's hit the ground running here. Pick six. For those that are new, yeah. first of all, what's yeah. wrong with you? What are you new? But then again, let me not be rude. Welcome yeah. in. Sure. We're happy to have you. Let's be nice. Pick six, six different categories, each of us giving our own Touchdown score, money line dog, and under, an alt line, a yards prop, and a teaser game. That tag team teaser. Last year, very, very effective. Rare blow-up spots. We're hoping for similar results. If one of us messes it up, that is on us. That's kind of the mm. come-together spot, but the rest of these have certainly individual. Your first pick six of the season. Take it away. Let's do it here. And by the way, if we, I feel, Kevin, on the last one we we'll always go over is a teaser. If we can get by week one, I think we're going to have another magical uh-huh. season where it takes weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks until we actually falter. But I know we have some good plays. Let's get after it here. Touchdown prop. Even though I don't like them to win the football game, I think it makes way too much sense here. Nick Chubb at a plus 100. Is this an aerial assault? When they get inside the five, talking about the Cleveland Browns and their game against the Carolina Panthers, are they passing it? Are they just going to handle find that big, nasty offensive line with Nick Chubb, one of the best running backs in football? Plus 100 for me, Kevin, for him to score a touchdown. Dog play. Nessus didn't really love the dog play card at this point, but then again, that's why most people don't play dogs. They don't look that great here. How about this swing? A plus 250 on the Chicago Bears at home as a fade of Trey Lance and Kyle Shanahan. Now, I might look like a fool by Gondani. You told me all season you hated the Bears. You took the Bears opening week. They got beat 31-6. to <laughs> What did you expect? And I'll have to own up to that. But I'm going to take them as my dog this week. Figuring no George Kittle on the road. Maybe a little bit of struggles here for the San Francisco 49ers. My underplays, the Ravens and the Jets. And that's sitting at 44 and a half. It makes too much sense for me. I don't see a high wire act on either side. I do think Lamar Jackson does put up some pretty good statistics, including with his legs. But I do think it's one of those games in the fourth quarter where Joe Flacco is not going to have much juice left left in that tank. And also, Lamar Jackson and that Ravens offense will ground and pound and run that clock out. I see it staying under the total. My alt total, excuse me, my alt line in this one this week. I'm going to go with a side, and that's the Commanders at a minus five and a half price at a juicy plus 140 here. What's really the difference between two and a half and five and a half? Yeah, Donnie can win by a field goal. I get it here. But if I think Washington is going to win this game, I'm not saying like, ooh, I don't know if they can win by more than three points. No, I'd be comfortable that they win this by a touchdown. So I'll take the Commanders plus five and a half at the plus 140 price. How about a yardage prop here? I've been talking about watching Justin Fields in the preseason. I like to see that maturation process with his arm, but that's not where I'm focused today, Kevin. I'm focused on his legs. And if we're led to believe, which I know is true, 
the 49ers are really talented in their front seven, which means if that pass break protection breaks down on the offensive line for the Bears, he's going to be running and running a lot. No doubt in my mind, he gets over 33 and a half yards with his legs. And then my teaser game, I got to stick to my guns and be true to it here. I told you guys, Minnesota Vikings are going to win opening day, but I'm going to take a little bit of insurance here and push that over a touchdown. I'll take those Vikings at a plus seven and a half, Kevin. Away, what do you got? Pick six, opening weekend. Mm. Now, I don't want to rob you. Plus, plus, you've given me more time than I ever could have anticipated there, but That's I don't true. want to rob Thank you, you of, a, of, a, of a good little laugh. Unfortunately, oh, no. they, what I they, 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 no, you didn't say anything wrong. They, oh. they just, they're such a fan of me in the room that uh, mm. it says Kevin's picks on top of your picks there. So those are your picks, uh, but it now, says I think Kevin's that was you. picks. I think that was you uh-uh. knowing your picks might struggle. So that's the screenshot you can <laughs> take either way. I think it's that's a good how move by me. Yeah. Like that, I gotta, I gotta pay, that's I gotta funny. pay Steve with a lecture, but Man. those are Donnie's picks. And by the way, Man. I Here's one of the, the – I think a lot there's a lot of good stuff too. on that board. Uh, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of good stuff on the board. Can I just tell you, though, I was down to two guys for the touchdowns. Don and I don't talk before these because I do mine yeah. bef- like at midnight and he does them at 4 in the morning. But I was down to two guys for touchdown score, and one of them was Nick Chubb, and I didn't pick yeah. Chubb. So it's inc- so I'm glad to see that you picked Chubb. I think Good. he's – I mean, there a plus go. 100, the value makes a lot of sense. My touchdown score, James Conner, minus 105. James Conner last year had 18 total touchdowns, 15 on the ground, and scored in four of the five games that he played last year without DeAndre Hopkins. So don't be worried about, oh, can the offense still move? They'll move, and it's more likely to be in Conner's hands down there on the goal line. Money line dog, we just talked about it. I think the Atlanta Falcons are more than live in that football game there. Fantastic corners that can unsettle Jameis Winston, who is on the road as a favorite, not a good spot. And again, it's a new look Falcons offense against Dennis Allen, whose success as a head coach is far from what it was as a defensive coordinator under Sean Payton. Life without Sean Payton, I think, can be rockier than some people anticipate for the New Orleans Saints. As far as the ta- the under goes. Vikings Packers under 47 and a half. I had this in and then I almost erased it. I had to stick true. I just think Green Bay continues to move slowly here in this new era of football that they're going to be bringing to the table without Devontae Adams, potentially without Alan Lazard as well. Plus Kevin O'Connell, first time truly under the helm. Maybe chance he's overwhelmed and misses a couple of steps there under 47 and a half. Alt line over Texans Colts 49 and a half plus 140 love over 45 and a half this worked out a lot last year if you like over 45 and a half why not keep going and get to 50 Hertz over 225 and a half passing yards went over this in three of his first four games last year they're gonna look to throw the ball early season teaser game Giants plus 11 and a half Daniel Jones is a covering machine on the road we've got double digits in our back pocket Donnie will close it out with a listen up Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game Four live wins. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. 
Who do you expect more from this evening? I think the Bills are, are going to have more success offensively, but I really, when it comes to the receivers, I think we're going to see Stefan Diggs um, really have a big game in comparison to where his yardage prop is lying. But he's going to get a lot of the attention from a Buffalo secondary that is really compromised without Tredavious White. And that, that's part of the reason why I'm on the over here is, you know, Buffalo's forced to start Elam, a rookie cornerback. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Most people are pretty optimistic, and I'm certainly in the group, on what Mike McDaniel can be as a play caller, as a head coach in Miami. This is a defense that was top 10 in the NFL last year. Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, one of the better secondaries, usually on a year-to-year basis in Miami. I know it's going to be an uphill battle for them to compete in their division. I think the Dolphins, a plus 142 to make the playoffs, is a nice piece of business. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Harlow inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Have you heard of Kazoo? If you travel internationally, Italy, Spain, France, you have. It's an online car retailer. We have them in the States, too, with different brands. These guys decided to get into the market pretty quickly by sponsoring every sport under the sun. Cricket, snooker, darts, everything else. And the bottom line is... The company has to be strong in order for a sports marketing deal to be strong. They're cutting back. They're spending 200 million euros less than they did before. And the bottom line is this is a company that may not be as strong as it was when it originally spent the money. So now they're reassessing. They're restructuring. All those words mean that sports sponsorship is great in certain situations, but it's not necessarily the panacea. Sports Professor Ricardo, Sports News Minute. Last segment of the week here for the early line. Right here on Sirius XM, Channel 159. Donnie Wright side here and Kevin Walsh. Bringing that heat on our very first official NFL Football Friday. Did you enjoy the game last night? It was sensational to watch it play out. The Bills and the Rams going head-to-head. You know what the best part about that is? We're going to do it all over again on Sunday with a complete schedule that spills into Monday night. No teams on buys, so we're ready to go. But my question to you out there, no, should it be a question? Buffalo is going to the Super Bowl. Listen up. Don't let it get twisted out here. When your boy DRS was like, oh, man, I got a free bet here. I should have said not a free bet. A $200 bet I need to place down at the FanDuel Sportsbook on one of their promotions. $20 for each win that your team gets. And you do get basically, if they get 10 wins, a free roll of picking the Super Bowl. I only plus 600 on those Buffalo Bills. You want to check right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, it's plus 500. We got that CLV, baby, heading out through the rest of the season. Granted, it is one game, but it feels nice here because it felt like we might have been in a referendum type situation on the Buffalo Bills. Not same Josh Allen. They can't get over the hump. The Rams are the better football team in their own building. The Buffalo Bills will probably get knocked out in the playoffs, but that is a massive win for the Bills who, quite frankly, didn't play a clean game by any stretch of the mind. But Josh Allen looked incredible. 297 in the air, three touchdowns. He did throw two interceptions, only one of them his fault. And also, how about these? 10 carries, 56 yards, and another touchdown. This team is built to win. Just wait till they get back. Tredavious White on defense, one of the better cornerbacks in the league that's due to come off the pup list after week four. The Bills are very good. I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, and it's not anything that we're saying like, Donnie, nobody had the Buffalo Bills. We all have the Buffalo Bills. We are all Bills fans this season. Why? Because if they can cash me a nice 6-1 to price on winning the Super Bowl, I will be very happy. But quite frankly, it's great to have NFL football back in our lives and being right here on the Sports Grid Network and following it all season long. You know you want to follow now? Ben Stevens in the morning after coming up next. It's a football Friday right here on The Grid. <laughs> 